everybody. Welcome back to the GBJ podcast. Uh, we have a special guest here today. He's joined us once before. He's coming back again. The superintendent of SBC USD, Mr. Uh, Mauricio Ariano. Mr. Ariano, thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. All right. I'm going to let uh, I'm going to let the kids get going. So uh, I believe, Adrian, you had the first question. Go ahead. Having grown up and gone to school in San Bernardino, what is it like going back to schools you went to as a kid? <laughs> it, it has been a lot of fun to return as the superintendent of the school district where I grew up. Uh, every day when I drive around town or when I'm actually walking around the schools that I attended, a lot of great memories start to come back in my mind. I think of all the great teachers and principals and custodians and classified aides that helped me along the way. Uh, so it's, a, it's just a reminder of being grateful of what this uh, city and district gave to me. Uh, but I'm super excited uh, to be here and, and help all of you now uh, achieve your dreams and your goals like the district did for me. So it's, uh, every day is a great day because uh, it's like uh, reliving my childhood. I, I get to be five, 10, 15, 18 years old every day when I walk through the district. So thank you for that question. What made you want to be a superintendent? <laughs> you know, I didn't start off uh, wanting even to be in education. I, uh, I wanted to be an FBI or a CIA agent when I went to college. And my dad asked me uh, that I should apply to be a substitute teacher. So I went down to the district office and they said, hey, how would you like to teach uh, elementary school? Because they, they saw that I spoke Spanish and they had classes of kids that only spoke Spanish. So I was only going to do it for a year. And man, I just, I enjoyed teaching. I enjoyed making an impact in people's lives. And so as my career has progressed, um, a lot of the people that I worked for, I think, saw some leadership qualities in me. And so pretty soon I became a vice principal then a principal, then an assistant superintendent. And then uh, eventually I, I took that step to be a superintendent because uh, I feel like I have learned a lot, but I also remembered a lot of my experiences as a kid uh, that I think I could help our school district uh, even be better than where they're at. So uh, that's how I landed here. So uh, I'm very happy and very humbled and very proud. We at Broward have a dual immersion program. How has being bilingual helped your career? Uh, thank you for the question, Sonia. It's actually been very helpful. As a matter of fact, as I mentioned earlier, that's how I became a teacher is that uh, when I applied to be a substitute teacher, they noticed that I spoke Spanish. So having that ability to speak a second language is what opened up a career door for me which now I've been in public education for 33 years. So I'm really happy that in San Mario City Unified School District in particular, we have valued uh, dual immersion, meaning uh, learning more than one language. I'm glad that we prioritize that. And so hopefully the doors that open for me because I was able to speak English and Spanish, hopefully we'll be opening thousands and ten thousands of doors to all the kids who are learning a second and sometimes a third language. We now have an elementary school where kids are learning English, Spanish, and Mandarin, Chinese. So uh, it's very important uh, and I think it opens up other opportunities. It's really cool. <laughs> I even learned how to speak French when I was in college because French and Spanish are really close. But to be honest, I have forgotten most of my French, but at one time I could speak three languages. <laughs> oh, I, I kind of know how to speak like three languages, but not really. Excellent. What, what is the best part of your job? You know, the best, the best part of my job really is just the people. I, I really, I've always considered myself a people person. So I enjoy saying hello to everybody. I enjoy talking to everybody. I like hearing everyone's stories. Um, you know, the kids, I love going through schools and just talking to kids and asking them how they're enjoying the day, if they're having a good time at school, if they're learning a lot. 
uh, to me, the energy comes from interacting with people. So uh, I think it's an important trait too, if uh, you know, in life, it's important to know how to talk to people, work with people, interact with people, but more importantly, make sure that you see people. You know, many times we're so busy, we walk by people every day, but we never even take the time to just say, hello, good morning, how are you? That simple little greeting can make somebody's day go from okay to great just by saying hello. So that's what I like doing every day is just interacting with all the different people. What would you say to a student who tells you that they want to go into education? Oh, I, I would highly encourage it. And here's why I say that. I truly believe that our public education system is what keeps our democracy and our great country moving forward. Because it's where new ideas get hashed out. It's where kids grow up and they dream about wanting to do something and they actually do it that has great impact to society, whether it's maybe you invent a medicine, maybe you invent a, a machine that makes somebody's health easier or better, or you invent a faster way to build a house or some way to make life easier. So I would say that being a, an employee in a public education system, whether you're a teacher, custodian, cook, police officer, I, I just think that, you know, our public education system is what keeps our country moving forward. So I would say, do it. It's a great career. Um, you know, you're never going to be rich, 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 but you're always going to be comfortable. But at the same time, you're going to know that you're having a great impact. I'm going to tell you something, Melody, the question she asked me just yesterday, one of my students, when I taught fifth grade at Muscoy Elementary in 1993, uh, came to see me yesterday, and he actually works for us. And so he sat down and had coffee with me, and he was telling me about all these things that he remembered me saying, me doing, which, of course, I don't remember. But to him, those moments were so important that 30 years later, it made an impact. That's why I would say coming into public education, because you know the impact that you have on people, and, and Mr. Rogers will tell you, you don't see it in the moment. You see it 20 or 30 years down the line. And it's so rewarding when that happens. So I'd say do it uh, and be good at it. So we're going to go back to a, a game that we played with you the very first time that you came on with us. Uh, it's called Area No, Area Yes. So um, they've got six or seven questions. They're going to shoot at you rapid fire and no explanation needed. You're just going to answer area no if it's no, area yes if it's yes. And um, who's our who's our first person? Go ahead. School uniforms. Ariel, maybe. Can I use that one? <laughs> Actually, I'll go Ariel, no. I like personal uh, freedom and expression. So I'll go Ariel, no. More STEAM activities. Oh, Ariel, yes. Um, after school festivals? Ariane, yes. Larger play structures? Ariane, yes. Small school breaks during the year? Ariane, no. Pets at school? Pets at school? Ariane, it depends. So I'll say Ariane, yeah, Arian, yes, but with some rules. <laughs> Yay! I think you just I think you just made their day with that with that answer. <laughs> okay, so um we really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for taking the time. I'm gonna leave you with one thing because I promised you the last time that you were on that I was going to keep talking to you about this film festival. Yes. You gotta get it going. I, yes, I, I really want to make it happen. So you and I have had multiple conversations about it, but I really want to make it happen because uh, film is something that is is uh, important to me. And I know that, um, that it's having the children, the kids express themselves through video is, is something that's important to you. So I, yeah. I, I really want to want to make that happen. So I'm going to, I'm going to stay in your ear. You're, <laughs> you're not getting rid of me. I'm going to be a pest. No, I want you to be that pest. So thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you very much. Keep up the great work. Okay. Okay. Right, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you so much for joining. Thank you, guys. Bye Have bye. a good day. Have a good bye day. Bye. bye.
today joining us, we have a very special guest. Um, many of our students are huge fans of this guy. Uh, Generation Genius is his website. The show is Labra Kazam. Uh, the dancing scientist, Jeff Vinegar. Thank you so much, Dr. Jeff, for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be here with you. All right. I'm going to let the kids go ahead and uh, get started. What made you want to be a scientist? When I was a kid in elementary school, I always liked to learn about how things work, why they work. I would mix up chemicals in the kitchen, uh, in the garage, and that made me really excited about science. And then I went on to study science in college and ultimately ended up making the Generation Genius, show, Generation Genius shows. You're the dancing scientist. If you had to choose between dancing and science, which one would you choose? That is a great question. Uh, I would I would choose science. I'd like to say that I'm a, a scientist first and then a dancer second, but it's good to have a balance. You know, if they kind of work maybe a different part of my brain and one is more artistic, dancing is more like an art and science is, is the opposite of that. And so I like to be able to, to do both. And talking about that, what's your favorite dance move when you do like the show? That's a great question. My favorite dance move, it's called a head isolation. I'll see if I can do it for you here. So you start by moving your head like this. I'm not sure if you can see that, but basically it looks like my head is kind of frozen as my body moves. So that's one of my favorites. That's cool. Thank you. And very creepy. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good Halloween dance move. What is your favorite experiment that you ever did? Ooh, I've done a lot of experiments. I really like explosions. That's my, my favorite. You can um, put certain gases in a balloon and when you light them on fire, the balloon explodes. You can put some things in water and then they explode. There's all kinds of explosions. And uh, I did a few of them on the show, but we always have to be really careful. And there's lots of people around to make sure that we're being safe. Are they scary? They can be scary, yes. But I, I think I've um, I've done a lot of them, so I'd say I'm an expert, which means I know how to do it in a in a safe way and from a safe distance, and that makes it okay. Explosions are cool. Yeah, how I think so. Have you ever had an experiment go horribly wrong? Um, I've never been injured in any science experiments because safety is really important. But it's very common that experiments don't work. Like if you're trying to mix two liquids and they change and they're supposed to change colors, sometimes you mix them together and it doesn't change colors. Then you have to figure out what you did wrong. Maybe you forgot to put some powder in one of the liquids or something. So it's very normal that experiments don't work. Then you just basically try them again uh, in a, you know, remake whatever you had to make and, and try them again. Is it annoying to do like for them to not work? It can be, yes, but I think that's just part of uh, part of being a scientist. It's like if you if you play baseball, sometimes you swing the bat and you don't hit the ball. That is annoying, but you still enjoy playing the game and you're going to swing the bat again. So I think of it that way. Oh, okay. What made you want to do a show for kids? Before I started doing a show for kids, I would travel to schools and put on school assemblies. So all the kids would come into the gym or the auditorium, and I would do a one-hour show. I would make things bubble, fizz, explode, change colors, and teach them about science. And it was really fun, and the kids liked it too. But I could only be in like one school a day. So how could I be in lots of schools at the same time? thousand schools or 10,000 schools at the same time. Well, I can't, but if I made videos, then I can let those videos be used by schools all around the country. And so that's what I did was to try to reach, uh, to inspire even more kids than just one school a day. And I, I made videos. So that was the idea. Why did, well, that was a cool idea. Thanks. It seemed to work out so far. Did you have kids join you? In the show, we do have kids. So in Labra Kazam, there's two kids that are with me, uh, Izzy and Zoe. And in the other shows that I do, I also have uh, other kids of different ages join me as well. And for, to be those kids, we hold auditions. Uh, I live in Los Angeles, and we have auditions here where kids uh, try out, just like trying out for a soccer team 
or, or, or anything like that. They try out and we, we choose which ones uh, we think are the best fit for, for the show. Is that really your mom in the videos? That is my real mom. That is 100% real. That's actually pretty cool. Thanks. How long does it take to film an episode of Labrakazam? That's a good question. We can film the video in one day, but it doesn't mean it takes a day to make them because we have to kind of plan it out and write, write out write what we're going to say. We have to prepare the science experiments. Uh, and all of that might take uh, a week to prepare for it and then a day to film it. But then once you film it, you still have to edit it together and make the animations and the music and all of that. So when you put all that together, it's probably two weeks per episode. But the actual filming is just one day. If I wanted to be in one of your videos, what would I have to do? You would have to come to one of our auditions. We don't have any scheduled right now, but you would basically um, show up and then we will give you some uh, some lines to read, which is basically a piece of paper, you know, kind of pretending to be a character in the show to see how it goes. And it's it's tough because there's a lot of kids that try it out. When we were making Labra Kazam, I think it was around 500 kids that auditioned for each role, for each role. So to be Zoe and another 500 to be Izzy. If we wanted to audition, where would we have to go? Well, we do it in like a studio. Uh, Los Angeles is the same place where Hollywood is. Where, where are you guys located? I forgot to ask. San Bernardino. We're, yeah, we're in San Bernardino. So we're, we're not that far from, from Hollywood. Cool. So we, the auditions were held in Hollywood. We basically rent out a studio and we uh, do like a kind of, it's like a call the casting call. So lots of kids get notified and their parents uh, get notified that we're doing this and, and they show up to audition. Um, but we don't have any scheduled right now. So uh, right now there's not a, there's no ability to audition right now. Is Bert a real working robot? He is a real working robot, although to control Bert, um, he requires someone to help move him around. So for example, um, you know, to move the wheels forward and back, there's someone that helps with the remote control off the cam off where you can't see them off the camera, off camera, as we say, that helps move Bert around. But yes, he's a, uh, it's real and it works. Um, although Bert breaks a lot, you don't really see that in the show, but he breaks down almost every day. And then we have to figure out what's wrong with him uh, and, and fix him. Maybe like a eyebrow stops moving or the battery goes dead. So Bert's, uh, Bert is high maintenance. Like, does he have someone to talk for his voice or does he say it by himself? Um, I'm going to ask your, your, your teacher, how should I answer this question? Um, it's it's kind of like a, a Santa Claus question, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, I think that they, I think they could, they could hear the truth. I think they could handle it. Sure. All right. Can you ask your question again? Um, does Bert have someone talk for his voice, or does does he have to do it by himself? He does have someone talk uh, for his voice, and we also held auditions for what kind of voice we wanted Bert to have. And so that's the, the voice that we picked. And the interesting thing is when we're filming these videos, Bert doesn't talk to us when we're filming the videos. And later when we edit the videos, they put in the voice and then it looks like we're talking to each other. Um, so it's kind of a little bit of movie magic. But, but make sure you don't tell anybody, this is a top secret. Okay, okay. Well, what I have to do if I want to be a scientist? Good question. Um, so to be a scientist, first you want, would want to be, you know, interested in science, excited about science, which means that you you enjoy it. You you like understanding how something works, why it works, and that makes you you know interested. Um, and then when you go to college, you'll have to choose what they call a major, which means some some something you specialize in when you're learning uh, in in college. So that can be you can specialize in in history, in math, in science. Uh, and, and many other things, like engineering, um, dance. Oh, I, there's probably hundreds of different things you could specialize in. And so if you really like science, 
uh, you can choose to specialize in in science, but usually it's more specific than that. So you would specialize in a certain type of science, like biology, or chemistry, or physics, uh, or geology, which is a study like rocks and the earth and stuff. Um, but you don't have to decide that now. I think, you know, enjoy science as you go through the grade levels, and eventually you can make a decision on what you want to study when you're when you're 18, basically. Okay. Where did you go to college? Good question. So I grew up in New Jersey, and then I went to college at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. It's in Wisconsin where it's very, very cold. It snows uh, for like half the year. But um, I studied biochemistry there. And then after I finished uh, college, I went to graduate school, which is like, you know, even more education than college. I did that at UCLA. University of California, Los Angeles. And so that's why I ended up here uh, in Los Angeles because of school. Who was your inspiration? That's a great question. So I, I could say there's maybe two different inspirations that um, were important to me. The first one was called Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunter. Have you guys heard of this person? No. All right, so when I was growing up, he had a TV show that was really exciting. He showed all kinds of animals, everything from crocodiles and snakes and polar bears and everything, every animal you can imagine. He made it really fun and really exciting. He made me love animals. And he was really, really passionate and excited about the animals. And for me, um, I, I wanted to basically have that same passion and excitement, but instead of animals, for science and science experiments. So that was inspiring, kind of seeing him and doing these TV shows. And then when I grew up, I was able to kind of do my own shows, but about science, but in the same kind of um, with the same kind of excitement. Uh, and the second uh, inspiration would be uh, Bill Nye, who you guys f might be familiar with. Yes. Yeah. Great. So that, that was a show that was popular when I was a kid. And as a kid, I didn't watch it a lot. I, I actually watched Steve Irwin much, much, much more. But I'm, I'm still inspired by Bill Nye and how he also had a science show uh, for kids. And I basically... Uh, I have a science show for kids as well, uh, 25 years later, but you know, I, I, I respect what came before me. And, and so I definitely admire the work that Bill Nye did. That's pretty cool because Bill Nye's a science guy and you are too. And I think that's actually like really cool. Cause I, I watch, cause I watch you and Bill Nye. Cool. Thank you. What? What are Zoe and Izzy like? They're cool. We we film, you know, every day for like a, a month and a half. And we got to be, you know, friendly, almost like friends. And yeah, they, they like science. They like um, acting and these kinds of things. So we had a good experience together. Do you, do you guys hang out um, when you're not on camera? Uh, not really. I'd say I'd say no, mainly because our we're, our ages are very different. It's like you know you wouldn't hang out with someone that is uh, 22, right? It's like just different different levels. Um, so similar to that, uh, I'm much I'm much older than I'm I'm 33 now. So when I was making the show, I was like 26. It's a couple years ago. So um, pretty big age difference. Although I would say that Izzy is very funny in real life. He is super funny. And, and so that's why in the show, when he's like, he's the one making the most jokes, that wasn't like some, we didn't script it to be that way. Like he's just actually really funny in real life. And how is like um, Zoe like? She's really cool. She um, also really enjoys doing like, um, like theater, like performing on stages and stuff like that. And after she finished the Generation Genius episodes, that's what she does. She travels around the country and performs um, theater shows. And she's really, really good. We are learning about the water cycle. What is something most people don't know about water? Uh, what is something? Most people don't know that the water on Earth is really, really, really old. It, you know, it, it constantly moves in a cycle. Uh, but water is, is very, very old, millions and billions of years old. And so it just constantly moves from the water that's on a lake, up into the sky, into the clouds, and back down. So it's just, it's just cycling around and around, but it's been here forever. Well, almost forever. Do you enjoy filming these videos? 
I do. Yeah, it's it's fun. Uh, you know, the, the the days are really, really long. We start really early in the morning, like seven o'clock in the morning. And sometimes we film until 10 o'clock at night. It, it can be uh, very long, but it's fun. I'm getting to do science experiments. Um, but after I film a whole bunch of episodes, I definitely sleep like all day for a couple of days. Have you ever had in like m different kids than Easy and Zoe on your videos? Yes. So on Generation Genius, we have shows for like different age groups. So uh, we have grades three to five, which is Laverick Kazam. We have grades K to two, uh, which is called Three to Wonder. We have grades six to eight, which is called the Lab Report. So each of these shows that is similar. We're teaching about science topics you learn in school, but they're with different age kids. So the kids in the younger shows are, are younger. I think probably younger than you guys are. And in the older show, they're they're you know like teen or already like eighteen years old. So it just depends on the show. Since you're a scientist and you film videos, would it be possible for you to come to San Bernardino and do some science at George Brown Jr. for like an assembly? That's a Maybe. great question and a, an awesome question. Right now, I'm really focused on trying to figure out how to uh, make more videos for Generation Genius and to get more schools to use it. So I'm, I'm not currently doing school assemblies for any schools right now. But if I start them again, I would be very interested in coming to your school. Thank you, Dr. Jeff, for, for giving us your time. I know that all of my students, all, all the fifth graders and the sixth graders here at George Brown, they're all going to be super excited uh, to see to see this video. Everyone was really looking forward to hearing what you had to say. So uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, the website, Generation Genius. Um, any teachers out there, check it out. It is amazing. You will learn so much. There's so many resources on there and the videos are entertaining and the kids love it. Uh, Dr. Jeff, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you, everyone. And don't forget, always question, always wonder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.